the exponential function we spend uh, probably 99% of our time talking about is e to the x. It occurs so often in nature and in financial math and in biology and chemistry and all over the place that we um, spend very little time talking about any other exponential functions other than e to the x. However, when the time comes where you might you know, have a 2 to the x or 10 to the x or 7 to the x or something like that, um, we, need, we may need to know how to take its derivative. And unfortunately, it's not exactly the same as the derivative uh, of e to the x. There's a, a slight modification that needs to be made. So that's, that's what we're going to talk about here. So um, uh, before we get into a to the x, let's just uh, remind ourselves, what is the derivative of e to the x? Well, this was one of those great derivatives that students always love. The derivative of e to the x is itself. That makes it really easy to remember. Um, the, the special property of the graph of e to the x is that the slope at any point agrees with whatever the y value currently is. It's a very, very strange property. Um, as the y value increases, so does the slope. And at a, a perfect relationship here um, to where whatever the y value is, that will be what the slope is. So the derivative of the function is the same as the original. So um, knowing that, let's, um, let's look at an idea like this. So what if we wanted to take the derivative of not e to the x, which by the way, uh, I'm sure we all know, e to the x is like uh, 2.718. It's just a decimal, just somewhere between 2 and 3. So what would the derivative of 4 to the x be? Well, uh, it would be great, it would be wonderful if the derivative was 4 to the x, just like the derivative of e to the x was e to the x. But unfortunately, that's not the case. This guy's derivative is not 4 to the x. Um, so what is it? Well, let's, let's see here. Uh, believe it or not, it's actually not that far off. Um, so I I'm, you know, possibly made that sound a little bit uh, more distant than, than uh, away from the derivative of e to the x than it actually was. Um, here's how we take the derivative of somebody with a base other than e for uh, an exponential function like this. The derivative, uh, turns out, it actually does have a to the x in the answer, right? Um, so like the derivative of e to the x was e to the x. The derivative of eh, 4 to the x would have a 4 to the x, but here's the difference. We actually have to write down a supplementary term. There's an extra term that comes along uh, if the base is something other than e. So at the end, we would put the natural log of a. So remember that. The natural log of the base comes after you copy that exponential down. Now you look at that and you say, well, Devin, that's really weird. Why did we not do that for e and why do we do that for every other function? Uh, well, believe it or not, it's actually there, uh, believe it or not. So, um, you know, if your function was e to the x, following this idea, let's, let's just take the derivative like this because e is just a particular base. Um, this says the derivative would be e to the x, right? e to the x times the natural log of e. But one thing we know about exponentials and logarithms is that they're inverses of each other, uh, specifically the natural log function and the natural exponential function e. And so when you have this in particular, this is 1, and so we never write it. So it's actually been there all along. We just didn't notice it. And so if you had something like this, you know, if we said what's the derivative of 7 to the x, and the derivative is 7 to the x times the natural log of 7, well, the only thing different is this won't cancel like it would if uh, the 7 had been an e instead. So just remember we have the supplementary term to add when the base is not e, if it's, if it's anything else, any other um, acceptable base for an exponential function. All right, now you might say, well, Devin, what about, you know, if you have actually composition and you actually have something in the exponent? Well, we know what to do if it's e to the x. Um, if you have e raised to some function, in effect, you're just using the chain rule, right? Because you have the derivative of the outside followed by the derivative of the exponent. So that's something we're pretty good at. So here, I think we can just piece these two independent ideas together. Um, here we go. Derivative of a to the u. Well, in all likelihood, it'll be a to the u. We just copy the exponential down um, times we have the natural log of a, that's the new property that we just learned because the base is uh, potentially a little different. And then what do we do by the chain rule, all right? What do we do with this um, inside or this exponent here? 
will follow all that with the derivative of u with respect to x. And this is about as full as they can possibly get. A base other than e with a bunch of uh, junk in the exponent. So we can handle it all now. All right, so just remember these three pieces right here. All right, so let's, let's give one a try here. Um, and this is about as ugly as they get. The derivative of four with a different base other than e uh, raised to the x cubed minus x plus 10. First thing I notice is that it is an exponential. So the derivative of an exponential, you basically just copy the exponential. That's the, the big main part of the derivative there. All right. Now, because this is a base four, I'm going to tack on a times natural log of four. And then by the chain rule, the chain rule, because I actually have something in this exponent, I'm going to follow that with 3x squared minus 1. Now, where did 3x squared minus 1 comes, come from? Well, that was the derivative of x cubed minus x plus 10. All right, now this whole chain rule bit, uh, let, let me just think for a minute. Why did we never do that before? Well, again, we actually did, believe it or not. Um, the reason you don't typically see this is if your exponent is just an x, then the derivative would just be one. And so it wouldn't actually show up in, in most circumstances. So um, anyways, this is great news now. Uh, we can now differentiate um, any generic exponential function that has uh, a base other than e and potentially uh, an exponent other than x. Uh, now, I just want to close out this video with one last little thing. Uh, I want to um, talk about where, where this derivative comes from. Right? We're doing this strange property where we're just tacking on an extra term and whatnot. And so this is a little extra. If uh, you want to move on to the next video, you're welcome to. But um, just in case you're curious where, where this property is coming from, I just want to take a moment and, uh, and explain it to you here. So why, why is the derivative of a to the x, a to the x times this natural log of uh, the base or, or what have you? Well, here, here's where it's coming from. Uh, it comes from cleverly rewriting a to the x. Understanding that we have a firm grasp on the derivative of e to the x, what we're going to do is this um, very clever uh, um, rewrite of a to the x like this. We're going to write it as e to the natural log of ax, uh, a to the x. Now, how does that work? Well, these are equal because e and natural log being inverses of each other, they could cancel and you would just get your a to the x um, expression back. So it's perfectly legal. Um, but what I just did there was I, in effect, swapped the base from a to be e. And so this is something I'm more comfortable with. Now, there was a property of logarithms as well that's going to come into play. You might remember if you have natural log of something to some power, this power can move out front of the logarithm. And so this expression would become e raised to the x times the natural log of a. All right now, you might be wondering where are you going with this? Well, just hang with me and just... Um, check my algebra and make sure I'm doing correct things and uh, and then you'll see kind of the the big surprise at, at the end here so we certainly are allowed to do that all right now natural log of a that's a constant that so this might as well just be e to the 5x let's say just for for easy math or whatnot so if you wanted to to differentiate this guy you want to take this guy's derivative well that's the same as taking this guy's derivative so here we go the derivative of this expression would be the same as the derivative of this and the derivative of this. Okay, so now how do we take the derivative of e to the u again? Well, we would um, copy the exponential. We write e raised to the x times the natural log of a, followed by the derivative of the exponent. Now, if this was just for easy math, 5x, the derivative would be 5. So what would the derivative be in a ge general case? Um, natural log of a quantity times x. The, the derivative would just be the natural log of a, of course, right? So this is the derivative of a to the x in some roundabout way. Now you look at this and you say, well, Devin, that's not what you wrote. That looks a little bit different. Well, let me make one last connection. Who was this guy again? Who, who, who was this term here? Well, remember, that was the original rewrite of a to the x. So the final answer, if we took this guy and wrote a to the x again, we'd have a to the x, right, times, and here it comes, 
the natural log of a. Hey, there it comes. So um, this is where it comes from. Uh, just in case you're curious, I always you know see these theorems and these rules and these properties, and it just says do this, right? But we oftentimes don't take just a, a, a second or two um, to think about why this actually has to be true. Somebody figured this out, and uh, so some someone was very clever in rewriting the uh, exponential function a to the x to have a base of e so that they could um, deal with it you know a little bit easier